Hello and welcome back to Cinders. I had a lovely hot pepper dinner tonight. I, that's, I make it sound like that's all I ate. Yeah, I had a bunch of friggin' Schofield scale peppers shoving them in my face. No, I had a sandwich with hot peppers on it. My mouth is just completely gone. I can't feel anything. It's great. Let's begin. <sighs> Cinders just had a uh, little get-together with Peralt where she admitted her feelings for him, and then he turned around and made it all about money and and, jo and like security for her life. And I was like, I, I suppose this is not a conventional Otome, because uh, normally guys wouldn't balk at you professing your love for them. But whatever. I mean, it's refreshing on the one hand, on the other hand, it's fucking frustrating. Because how's she gonna get in his belts? Unless he agrees to let her in his belts. Alright. There's a siren passing. Maybe they're coming to get you. Alright. Hi, Mum. It's me. It was a while since my last visit. I'm sorry. I've had the most intense week. A bit crazy, actually. I feel like my head's so full with thoughts about what's been going on that it will burst any second now. Hmm. I met your old friend, Geed. She told me quite a lot about you. I can't believe how different it was, you were, in comparison with what father used to tell me. I'm sure you'd know what to do now. Geed said you were smart and strong. Da -da -da. And so are you. It's in your blood. Not this again. Did I just fall asleep without noticing it? You're not dreaming. All right. If you're so helpful, why don't you show yourself? As you wish. <laughs> Heavens! Who are you? I'm the fairy of the lake. The one who is praised and feared by souls elated. And those of broken spirit. That I'm just going to stop and say that that is a really, really, really super gorgeous piece of art. Look at all those fucking beads. Anyway. You've been keeping vigil by our lake through the seasons. You remembered about us. You did well. The sacrifice which your mother had made was not squandered. We are willing to uphold the Concord. You are free to ask for our aid. Forgive me, but I know nothing about any sacrifices or Concords. Yes, you have lost the knowledge which your mother had. She was always so close to us, so mindful of our presence, our ways. She... <laughs> like, she just, like, karate kicks out her hands, like she doesn't move at all. There's no segue between. She knew how to dance with us, and how to sing for us. She knew about the way a concord is made. She also knew about the weight of the price, that it is never equal to the weight of aid. It grows with time, it blooms, and is reaped. She made her sacrifice to bind us and make us watch over you. We are here. We offer aid. What are you saying? That my mother somehow sacrificed herself for me? I really doubt that. You can play with your doubts as much as you please, as long as your belief in us remains unspoiled. I really can't remember a single situation when a fairy helped me. I never noticed anyone watching me. So much certainty, and yet you speak of memories. You are very young indeed. You believe in certainty where there is only faith. Your mother's faith made this meeting a reality. Her foresight made this an opportunity. She knew you would need us eventually. It is in your blood. Soon you will be facing a grave choice. We are here. We are offering aid. Uh, yeah. Okay. I could use some help, fairy. I guess I could use any help I can get. It's not often that I meet someone willing to help me in the first place. Aid carries weight. Heavy may be the price. It tends to flourish with time. Like fate, it is a living thing. I understand. I think that sometimes we have to deal with the unknown and take the risk. If Mum was brave enough to take this plunge, I am too. I will pay the price. 
You spoke like your mother. Yes, your blood is one. You are forged like her. Soon you will need us. If you are indeed ready to carry the weight, we will make a concord with you. You will receive aid. It's good to know. I'm sick of having to do everything on my own. Even if it is better or safer, I still miss just being able to lean on someone or something else. Also, I'd be a fool not to take this opportunity, even if it does sound a bit dangerous. Your path is unfolding. Soon you will have to act and make a choice. You will be guided by your blood and nature. When it will come to pass, we will be waiting for you. I still can't believe it. Any of it. And yet your blood speaks otherwise. You are your mother's daughter. Your fate has brought you to the lake. And the lake is watching you. You keep on repeating things like that. But why me? What makes me so special? Special? What can be special for fate? No, you are simply a thread, and like all threads, you deem your own pattern special simply because it is yours. I guess it does make sense. Now go, and don't come back until you do! Now go home and rest. The time of change is upon you, and you will need strength to carry its weight. We will be ready. So, um, that was weird. I picked to let the fairies help me because I had already done a bunch of fairy things and it seemed like wasteful not to take them up on their offer, but I'm not sure if that's the best thing to be done in this game. But we'll see. She's gonna like sacrifice her life or Peralt's life or Basile's life or Sylvia's life or someone's life in order to get what she wants, which is just not cool, but whatever. Next up. Wake up, cinders. Does every day have to start with us having to wake you up personally? Rise and shine, sass. What is it? Oh, it's morning already? Someone had an eventful night. I've had the strangest dream. At least I think it was a dream. Or maybe... There's no time to discuss dreams, cinders. We're leaving. What time is it? Time when only strumpets and their johns are up and about. That was Sophia. <laughs> Time when only strumpets and their johns are up and about. Thanks, Sophia. <laughs> Sophia, that was vile. That was the truth. It's barely sunrise and I should be fast asleep. Don't expect me to prance like some deranged pony just because there's some big ridiculous party coming up. Oh, they're both holding their hands up. <laughs> Why did you have to get up then? What ridi- It's not ridiculous! I mean, there are preparations to be made and we should be taking them seriously. We had to get up an hour ago. We need those dresses corrected and who knows how much time that will take. Oh yes, the grand ball. Come on, we need to go now! Yes, I'm coming. Cinders will be gone for the rest of the day. The house will be left under your supervision. Do you think you can manage that? Don't be dense, of course she can manage. There are more well-oiled cogs in that pretty head than in yours and mine combined. Or maybe just yours. Now let's move! I can manage things for one day, Gloria, don't worry. All right, we're going then, bye! Why did she, um... Where's Carmosa? I guess she's going with them. Toodles! Have fun. All right. Call up Peralt and tell him to come over for a booty call. Everybody's gone except me. Back to their important businesses, plots, and grand balls. Why would they care about what I may want? It's just poor little cinders, no one important. What could such a meek creature do but just sit and whine and then comply? Well, not this time! Today is going to be different. It's the first day of the rest of my life and it's high time I made some changes. I don't yet know how, but I'm going to that ball, and I'll make their jaws drop! And when I get back, everything is going to be different. Up until now, I've only waited, heaven knows what for. Complaining and whining didn't get me far either. Also a surprise. So let's start acting reasonable. I have an aim, and I will achieve it. I will make the changes happen. 
I need to show Carmosa, Gloria, and Sophia that I can accomplish great things when I put my mind to it. It won't be easy, but let's face it. It would have no value if it was. Hmm. I need a plan, though. Or at least a dress and a way to get into the ball. The rest I can just wing. Both Madame Geed and that creature from the lake offered to help me when I finally know what I want. I swear, it's like I have two fairy godmothers. Having help is a nice change, though. A sign the tables are finally turning. Already, I mean. So whose word should I trust? To whom would it be better to be indebted? Who's less likely to mess it up for me? Well, this isn't cool. I wanted everyone's help. Um... If I were Cinders, like a real person making this decision, I would pick Geed straight up. But I'm picking the fucking fairy. I know this is going to turn out really poorly, because if Peralt ever finds out that I picked the fairy... Yeah, that's not going to go over well, but I'm going to do it anyway. YOLO! Fairy! Madame Geed's offer seemed genuine. Maybe even honest. But she seems dead set on getting what she wants, no matter the cost. And hell knows what that is when it comes to me and my future. Not that the fairy is too comprehensible or predictable. But there's no gain and no improvement without some sacrifice. And at least with the fairy, the accomplishment will be great, and the sacrifice... The sacrifice will be nobody's but my own! But let's not be too hasty. I just remember what the captain said about the the father's last will. Not just father's, it's the father's. <laughs> if it really exists and I could find it, then things could turn out quite interesting. And since Carmosa was so kind as to leave the house in her study unattended... DO IT! What does just go mean? They both sound like yes. Do it! Just do it! <laughs> 